So if you know some Excel VBA but can't apply Excel VBA to create value in the real world, then how useful are your Excel VBA skills? In this series, the Real World Excel VBA Task Series, it's season three. We work through real world Excel VBA tasks based on my work with the aim of helping you to understand how to apply Excel, Excel VBA in your work. And in this series, season three, we're going to deal with the job of creating form analysis for football matches. So what does that mean? Well, we should always start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind when you're doing any VBA task. And this is what we're working towards. And you might have seen this kind of thing, I don't know, in the newspaper when you're checking the football fixtures. But we've got the fixtures here. And then over on the right, we've got the last six games. So the results from the last six games, a loss, a draw, two losses, a win, and a loss for Greyhound here. And then we can um, aggregate up the losses, the wins, and the draws, and maybe create some kind of average points metric. So this is what we call form analysis. This is what we're working towards in this series. But for your real-world Excel VBA task, even if you did this manually first, yeah, it will be worth it because it will give you a sense of where we are going. And that's going to stop us getting lost along the way. And if you like the look of this, guys, don't forget about our Excel VBA for football traders community. We've got a whole load of tasks in there to do with football data. So if you're analyzing football data, you've got to check it out. And if you're just looking for a set of real world tasks, you love the real world VBA series, go and check out that community. So with that said, let's get into this one. I'm going to close this file. And then we're going to get into our download file. So make sure you download the file and work along with me, particularly important in uh, the real world series. So what's the first step? Well, we've started with the end in mind. We know what the analysis is that we want to get to. Now I do what I call general translation, and I literally do this verbally most of the time. I talk through it. I often walk around my office or my kitchen and talk through it. And it's very good here to use pen and paper. What are the general things you want to do and what techniques might help us do it? Well, I'm seeing the fixtures here. So one thing we definitely want to do is get some analysis for each of the home teams here. So what's that going to involve? That's going to involve a loop. So we want to loop through all of the fixtures first. And then what do we want to do? Well, for each team, we've got Greyhound first here. We've got to go back to this data set and then loop through the data set to find their most recent matches. So we've got two loops there. We've got to loop through the fixtures and we've got to loop through the whole data set. So say we're looping through the data set and then we find the team that we're looking for, which is Greyhound. Then we want to do something, don't we? We want to understand, okay, did they win or lose this game? And I can go ahead and find that information here in this column, I think. And then we need to transfer that information back into our form analysis. So what techniques would help us do that? Well, we need some position control, maybe some offset to get us to the right cell. And then we need some data transfer, don't we? Because we want to get the information from this cell and back onto our form analysis. So you see what I'm doing? Talking about what I want to do and then thinking, OK, what techniques might help us there? And this is a bit of a new development in my uh, VBA practice, because previously I'll go straight into pseudocode. That's what we're going to do now. Now, but these days I'll do this preliminary analysis where I'm just talking through the task and doing some general translation. So if we've done that, you might have made some notes along the way. Good old pen and paper is, do, is good for that. We can get into the VBA editor. Now, if you've never used VBA before, go and check out one of our absolute beginner videos. We will link in the video description below to one of our absolute beginner videos, and that will show you how to set up your system for Excel VBA. But hopefully you've got the developer tab visible. You've got the developer tab visible. You can open the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to bring it into your screenshot here. So Windows key and right, getting that all important setup where I can see Excel and the VBA editor at the same time. You might do that with two screens. If you're lucky enough to have two screens, it's absolutely fine on one screen, as you can see here. Got the VBA editor open. Now note at this point, how many files do I have open? We've got this funk res thing, which is do it to do with some analysis module in VBA. I have one file open. That's important because we're going to avoid the disaster of potentially losing code by saving it in the wrong file. 
So we're ready to do pseudocode. So that means we're ready to create the routine. So I've just inserted a module. And what do we do when we insert a module in Excel VBA option explicit? An option explicit means in practice that Excel is going to check the name of the variables to, to flag up any silly spelling mistakes. And believe me, that makes a huge difference. I've lost so many hours of that when I haven't used option explicit. I've lost so many hours of time. So we can go ahead and create the macro, and then we want an, an informative, meaningful name for the macro. So I'm going to say create form analysis, and this, of course, has to be a single word. Create form analysis, so you can see I've got the uh, underscores in that. So we've created the macro, but the worst thing you can do when you're doing a real-world Excel VBA task is just to jump in and start coding. We've got to do our planning and conceptualization. What I want is a set of steps written out in English or in your native language so you can understand it easily, a set of steps that I want to go through to do this analysis. If I've got those steps, those instructions in English, again, it's a process of translation. That instruction, let's convert it to VBA. I know, I know you're bored already. I know a lot of you have clicked off this video already, but if you can do these, start applying these Excel meta skills, it will simplify everything in your practice. So what are we gonna have to work through? Well, I know from my um, general translation at the beginning that I want to loop through all fixtures. And we've got the fixture range here. So there's a few decisions to make here. Do we want to define this range dynamically because maybe we'll have a different number of fixtures next week? Or do we want to do a static uh, definition? I'm going to stick with a static definition, I think, in this series. We'll see how we go. But if you want to learn how to do dynamic definitions, check out our video, Excel VBA Position Control Mastery in 13 one-line macros. The link is in the description below this video. So we're going to loop through all fixtures. And then, so say we have the first team, which is here, which is Greyhound. I'm going to say get first team name. And I'm going to allocate that to a variable. So allocate to variable. What's a variable? Well, a variable is one of the many things named confusingly in Excel. It's just a place to store some information. Clearly, the team name, we're going to have to reference a lot. It's an important piece of information. So let's just put it in a variable. That means it's more portable and easier for us to re reference. And so we can go ahead and put the pseudocode in. So declare variable uh, for active team name. So that it's going to be a string variable, isn't it? So when we're talking variables, we're always thinking, what type of variable is this? So it's going to be a string variable. It's going to uh, take text. So I can go ahead and just say this is a string variable here. While we're at it, talking about variables, string variable, and note how I'm putting the inverted commas in, and that, that's, that converts the text to comments. So when Excel runs this, it's just going to ignore all of this text. So it's a nice way of annotating and making notes just for us to use. We're also going to need a variable, declare variable, to support the loop. So declare variable to loop through the home teams, home teams on fixture sheet. And then we're going to need one more variable here. Now, just for space, I'm going to click and hold and move across here. You know, you don't have to do that necessarily. And then a third variable here. So what's this variable going to do? Well, we've got one variable to support this loop through the fixtures, what was the other loop that we know we've got to do? We've got to loop through all of the data. So declare variable, let's go ahead and correct that spelling. Declare variable to loop through data. Through uh, data. So I'm going to say historic match data, something like that, to make it as clear as possible. The good thing about doing these annotations, you know, we're not going to delete these. So when we convert these annotations to VBA, they're going to be nicely translated back into English and your native language. That's going to help you interpret the code should you have to come back to it. Should somebody else have to use it? Maybe someone else is going to debug it one day. Who knows? Your code should be properly annotated. So we've got to loop through uh, fixtures. Uh, we've got the team name. I'm going to go ahead and be a bit geeky with this. And when we open a loop, 
I'm going to say close loop here. So close loop through all fixtures. So a loop is a coding construct that has a start and an end point, just like a conditional statement usually has a start point and an end point. If we get to put that end point in, that again could be a disaster. It could cost us hours. So let's remind ourselves to close the loop. So we're looping through the fixtures. Now at the next level, we've got another loop, a loop within a loop. What this, What is this loop doing? We're looping through the historic match data. What do we want to do? We want to find the most recent fixture that this team has. And we can see the, the way this data is arranged. And I might optionally sort this data so that the most uh, recent game is, is at the top, but I can see in column G, We've got match day here. I can see the most recent match day is at the end of the data. Mm, that might have implications for us because it means we're effectively going to search from the bottom. Hmm. How would you do that with a loop in Excel VBA? So effectively, we want to start at the bottom, get to our team, which is Greyhound, and this would be our first fixture. So for our form analysis, uh, I can see the Greyhound win here. That's an away win, isn't it? Two get two is an away win. So that's a loss. So we'd go ahead and put the L in there. So I'm really, how would you say, acting out what I want VBA to do. That reinforces in my mind uh, what's going on. And if you think I don't do this when I do my real world programming, I do all of this, including just talking to myself most of the time. I don't know, it just seems to help. So loop through this historic match data, and we can go ahead and copy this, holding down the shift key and the right arrow, and then we want to close the loop through the historic match data. We're going through that data there, and then we want to, if this row, this match, contains the target team, so by the target team, I mean the team that's currently uh, the loop, the fixture loop is currently looking at, and let's call that a target team or, or an active team. I've opened a conditional statement. What do we need to do? We need to close the conditional statement as well, of course. And then if the row contains the target team, then what do we need to do? Well, we said last time, we've got a Greyhound home game here, and that's something else to think about. We only want the home game if we're talking about the home team. So we're actually looking at home form here not general form, we're just looking at home form. Um, so Greyhounds, yes, that's the target team. So then we want to get the result of the game. Get result of game. Uh, so win, draw, or loss. And, and they'll, they will be expressed in terms of one, X, and two, as you can see here in column F. 1x and 2, 1 being a home win, x being a draw, and 2 being a away win, which I believe is the standard notation, if you like, the standard language, uh, certainly in the UK, for win, loss, and draw. So we want to get that result, and then we want to transfer the result to uh, the form analysis on the fixtures sheet. Hmm. What do we need to think about there? Well, I've already inputted a result here, but what if it was the second or third result? So we're going to need some position control there. I'm just going to leave a note and say position control here. Position control, so move over to next column. Uh, EG result one, result two, and result three. Now. There's another question here, how many results do we want to cover? And would you define that statically or dynamically? Well, we're going to do something fairly simple in this series. We go into much more depth and detail in our Excel VBA football traders community. The link is in the description. I'm going to say three. We're going to cover three games here. But we could set it up dynamically. We'll see later, and maybe we could cover more games, four, five, six games, and you could create the dynamic power in your application uh, to do that. But this is pretty close, I think. What else might we want to think about? You know, clearing existing data. Um, let's put clear existing data here. I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary. That's the kind of thing I wouldn't put that in to begin with, but may, would maybe add it later. 
Um, but that, I think, is everything we need. So you can see, for doing really quite a sophisticated job here, we've got how many lines of code there? What, uh, 15, 20 lines of code. So when we express it this way, it's not actually that complicated, is it? And that's just come from very clear conceptual thinking. First, start with the end in mind. What do you want it to look like? Even if you have to literally go through and just do it like this, do it manually, it will give you a strong idea, a vision of where you want to get to. And then we did our general translation. So I just look at the task and think, okay, I want to go through the teams. I want to loop. We're, we're converting those general requirements into the techniques we might want to do. And once you've worked through those two stages, you can then get the VBA editor open. Are we going to jump into the code? No, we're not. We're going to do our planning and conceptualization, particularly creating lines of pseudocode that we can subsequently translate line by line into Excel VBA. So that huge task, that big monster of a task is suddenly looking much more manageable. And the best thing about this methodology, this approach is I use it for all of the problems I deal with in Excel VBA every week. I'm writing um, macros like this for real world customers and you can do the same. Thanks for watching this video, guys. And if you enjoy series like this, remember in our member communities, we have tons of them, series like this. There's, there's only two or three on YouTube. If you want to get more support, really push forward your Excel, Excel VBA learning, I would love for you to check out our member communities. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.